I wanted to do something special for St. Patrick's Day, so I researched and researched and researched and researched, looking for some sort of connection between St. Patrick and pets. And after that 10 excruciating minutes on Wikipedia, I did find that there were several churches that celebrate St. Patrick, including one called the... Well, hold on, let me make sure I'm getting this right. Uh, the Catholic Church. Hey pet villagers, happy St. Patrick's Day. This is Scott, the administrator here at Seven Hills Animal Hospital, part of the pet village of Seven Hills. Since that's the best I could do in 10 minutes, here's some pictures of some pets and green stuff. Uh, hopefully satiate your thirst for some clovered cats and some Dublin dogs, you know, like Dublin, Ireland. Never mind. You know, and here, here's a couple Irish breeds for good measure. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's move on. What do you want to talk about today? Well, speaking of Irish cat holics, Catholics. Cath Catholics. Did you know that John F. Kennedy was the first Irish Catholic president? And while he was president, he had a whole pack of dogs. He even insisted that they were allowed to come and uh, greet him when he got off the presidential helicopter. He had a bunch of terriers and an Irish wolfhound and a German shepherd. He had an Irish cocker spaniel that the president of Ireland gave to him. And the Soviet premier gave him a dog that he named Pushinka, which eventually had puppies, which he called Pupniks. He even had a Welsh terrier. And you got to wonder how that went over with the Irish folks. But the biggest surprise regarding regarding JFK is the fact that he was allergic to dogs. Of course, his love for his dogs considerably outweighed his allergies to them, and there are a lot of people out there who go through the same thing with their dogs at home. Your dog's skin produces proteins through something called their sebaceous glands. These are the main source of allergens that ignite people's allergic symptoms. As older cells of your dog's skin die, they're replaced by new cells. These old dead skin cells are shed in what we call dander. Allergens can come from other sources, such as your dog's saliva, and while she's licking her hair, it then eventually dries up and then flakes off. All these allergens can get airborne, and they're sticky, so they can adhere to things like clothing and furniture. And frankly, it's impossible to get completely rid of them. So if you're one of the 15% of the population that has a pet-related allergy, what can you do about it? Well, if you don't have a dog now and you're planning on getting one, there are some specific breeds you may want to consider. Normally, I'd be the first to tell you to go to your local humane society or shelter to adopt a dog. But if you've got allergies, you do have other things to consider, and you don't want that dog to just end up back in the shelter in two weeks. First things first, though, there is no such thing as a hypoallergenic breed. All dogs produce dander. The thinking is that some breeds just produce less dander less frequently. The truth is, though, that we don't have many scientific studies on hypoallergenic breeds yet and uh, how much they really can reduce the allergen levels in your house. In fact, there is one study done in 2011 that showed that there was no difference between the allergen levels in a household with a hypoallergenic breed versus any other breed. Now, the researchers did admit there were some limitations in the study, but if you want to read a little bit more about it, I put a link in the description below. Now, what we do know it couldn't be any worse to get a breed that's classified as hypoallergenic. So I have listed a few of those breeds in the description below, and you can do a search online and find a bunch of lists. Now, if you already have a dog, there are some things you can do beyond just going to your allergist for shots every week. I'm going to go through these quickly, so re-watch this if you miss something. After touching your dog, don't touch your face. Wash your hands right away. Take frequent showers and change your clothes often. Have a non-allergic family member brush your dog daily, and then bathe her or have her groomed frequently with a hypoallergenic shampoo. Keep your dog off your bed for sure. Out of your bedroom altogether is even better. Get rid of heavy carpets and curtains and furnishings that are going to hold on to pet dander. Get an air purifier with a HEPA filter. Feed your dog a hypoallergenic food, which helps reduce the amount of dander produced. Replace your home's air filters more often than you normally would. Clean, clean, clean. Wear a mask while you do it and use a HEPA filter in your vacuum. Don't smoke because it lowers your tolerance to allergens. Well, I'm glad I could overwhelm you today. You know, maybe St. Patty was allergic to dogs, and that's why we never hear about him having one. Maybe he didn't like dogs. How could he not like dogs? That's crazy. I'm not sure I can celebrate this holiday anymore. Who am I kidding? Any excuse to drink green beer. Happy St. Patrick's Day, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you want to keep learning more about pets, vets, and what we think your pet would say if she could talk, please subscribe or check us out on Facebook.